to take um, some stuff to the post office and uh, apparently we have to fill out all these forms now instead of like being able to fill them out there they I had to do it online before I went there so I had this massive bag full of like comics and stuff to take to send on to people and now I have to fill them all out individually online and then write down like the weight of everything, um, the price of everything, even though it's just like prints and comics and stuff. And then note down the ID for it when I finished. So I'm writing it down in the book and then I'm doing like a post-it note on each envelope. And I've got about, I've done four and it's taken me about 20 minutes. I am dying inside, like, I can't. Why do they make it so difficult? It's just so annoying. I don't know whether this has something to do with Brexit. Probably does. Like, um, I'm in Gibraltar, by the way, in case you guys don't know, which is like a British territory. So it's kind of different than Br being actually in mainland Britain, but they're still applying all the crappy rules and it's kind of annoying. So I, I, I have this thing where I massively put stuff like filling forms like off so it was a real blocker for me so now i'm finally just getting around to it because i got a coffee and i'm just like okay just pa just power through and then tomorrow i'm going to take them to the post office at lunchtime during my break and uh yeah fun times like i'm really grateful for my patrons and uh, anyone who bought the comic and stuff so it's nothing to do with that it's just annoying like postal stuff which is great love it that's what is left to do and uh i hate it <laughs> but once it's done i can relax because i think it's one of those things i've just been like thinking about and i was like i should do that and just been putting off so once it's done it will be good hopefully I'll, well sometimes i say that and then i'll go to the post office and they'll be like wait well, haven't done this and it's just like post office uh, okay that's it that's it's it 10 p.m and I'm just figuring out like some Kickstarter stuff and just figuring out what to do, like the layout and pricing and stuff, like trying to figure out how much money I would need if I wanted to print the comic, print, uh, get some rewards, like extra rewards. I was trying to figure out what I would want. So I have a few ideas for that. And then I was also thinking about doing like a bundle of Emily is Burning in case some people haven't read that uh, with the comics. So I could reprint Emily is Burning, that could be like one set. Um, I also had this idea to have like, so a day and night kind of vibe for the the two comics. And then they'd be bound together by a sleeve. And I was thinking what I could do on the sleeve is like, have one side have a night time with a 90s kind of house. And then daytime with like a kind of manor, Regency manor thing. It's all just ideas, I'm just scribbling down some quick ideas with a ballpoint pen and trying to figure it all out because it's a project in itself doing a Kickstarter so I'm just trying to like get it in my head what I need to do before I have to do it so I have to make a lot of like images for online which will work online better than you know print so I need to think about that stuff so this is just my scribblings basically and now I'm going to work on the next part of the the 90s comic um i think it's going to be called wishing on a star so i did some last night and not really happy with the way that it turned out so i'm probably gonna to have to photoshop a little bit her face here because it looks a bit silly and uh i don't know where to redraw this one because i just wasn't happy with it i'm not sure uh, um yeah so it's coming on i think i just need to maybe do some more random drawings for this one because I'm kind of not happy with the way that it's looking so far um not sure I was really happy with the Regency one maybe it's just me being a bit insecure so I'm just gonna maybe push ahead and uh 
I can always fix little mistakes when I come to Photoshop it all together. So I think it'll be okay. I just need to work on it a bit more, maybe add some more colour here and stuff. Yeah, I think it's alright. Like, there's just small, a couple of small mistakes. Like, I do like the way that her poses and stuff. But I don't like her face. I'm going to do some more pencil colouring on this one. I thought, like, I really like the style of this with a lot of the pencil shading and stuff. So I'm going to try and bring that a bit more into this one. Which will be a little bit different than the Regency one. Which had some kind of, you know, pencil-y stuff going on but not too much whereas this has got a lot more no it's kind of the same i don't know i think i'm just at that stage where i'm looking at it too much so i'm just like is this right this is just some preliminary work that i did for the regency one so maybe i need to go and do some like more preliminary work for this one possibly anyway i'm watching that show Ginny in georgia well listening to it and uh so i'm probably gonna work on this for like half an hour and then go relax in bed, watch some YouTube, and go to sleep. Oh, I finally, I finally finished doing all these envelopes, so I had to fill out every single one of them with a form online, like I told you, and then jot down a number, and tomorrow I'm going to take that to the post office, so it's going to be fun, it's going to be a fun day going through that, and then stamping each one. So I was thinking if I do do a Kickstarter, that is going to be painful if it gets funded, because it's going to be like, last time, last time I did a Kickstarter, it was 200 people bought the comic roughly and I'm hoping to get a bit more than that this time because it would be nice to exceed that goal I don't know if it will um at all uh I'm hoping so yeah let's see anyway um that's it for today I think Pesto doesn't like that Chris oh, she's looking at me. Pesto she's been sleeping with him like this whole time Somebody said recently that they didn't know that I had three cats. Well, I do. This is Kubo. It's usually Pasu who gets featured because she's the one who's like always jumping in front of the camera, wanting to get in front of the camera and stuff. So here's her, her Kubo's little fish, Kubi. So after I said I would only spend half an hour, I didn't. I spent another hour and a half, and I've been. Colouring in this page, I sketched it out and um, then I'm going to colour it in and uh, flip it over and do the lines. Um, something I noticed is that some of this is like a lot blotchier than the other comic but I think it will work well in the favour because I want to work on the lighting of this project, on this comic a little bit better because it's going to be all set like night time so I'm trying to like have the light come through this window and uh, do like night sky and stuff and then use pencils to kind of show where the light is and uh, I hope that it will look cool so this is kind of what it'll be like I, I went over this page a little bit more um, with some colors and stuff and I do I do like how it's looking um, I think I just had one of those moments where I was like oh I'm not sure about this so yeah it was getting there um, tomorrow I'll probably Tomorrow night I'll probably work on the line work for this, but that is more or less three pages. Well, I guess this is a double spread, so that is more or less four pages on its way to being completed. And that's pretty cool. I <laughs> found this really good way of like storing my other comic with some papers and I'm just keeping it all together like that. I should probably just get like a folder and keep them all together. That's it. It's now, um, I was looking at remote controls for this panel, I'm just going to turn the TV off, it'll make more sense once I do the lines and stuff. Still watching that Ginny and Georgia show, it's kind of just great background noise, sometimes you need background noise uh, when you're just trying to work on stuff, so yeah I'm going to go and try and sleep now because I've got work tomorrow and then I've got to take these to the post office tomorrow so I will catch you tomorrow. Okay guys, I'm not joking. Um, Every day this seagull comes to my balcony and I feel like this is our seagull friend. He just hangs out here and Google always chases him away. The other day he came here like six times. I'm not sure if he's trying to tell me something. <laughs> what do you want? We have this new like wood litter chip thing and I'm like, does he like that? What's going on? That's the story of the seagull. All the cats are like, what, how, why are you here? <laughs> it's 
currently quarter to 11 Thursday evening and I finished drawing up this page or lining it I want to say inking but I'm not using ink so it doesn't make any sense so I'm kind of happy with the way that it turned out um, I'm gonna do all the dialogue on Photoshop like and uh, like I did with Emily is burning what I did was I took a typography that I liked and then I hand drew over it and changed it up a little bit to suit the comic a little bit so I'll pick like a, a font that suits I think yeah so I'm kind of happy with this um it's it's getting there I think I'm getting more happy with it as I go on and I'm really liking the textures in this this one so yeah I'm happy with it and uh, I'm gonna go back and change this to be more like this so I think I might just cut out a piece of paper glue it over the top of this and then when I scan it I can make it look like it's part of the image and uh, yeah so that's kind of what I've been doing so I am now four pages down done and uh, of this short comic so I'm pretty pleased with that I have two, four, six, eight pages left, but a lot of the pages are more, way more complicated than this now, and I think it's going to be difficult. So that's it. Uh, yeah, I'll probably speak to you guys again sometimes before this vlog comes out, but uh, that's me for this evening. I think I'm going to go to bed now or maybe start drawing, lining the next page. I'm going to see. But yeah. That's it. Okay, I lied. I <laughs> It's now 12 and I finished colouring and, well, first of all, sketching out another page and then colouring it. And uh, this is how it looks, the coloured side, and then this is where I'm going to do the pencils on. It looks a bit weird without the pencils, but when I add those in, it will look different. Um, this is going to be like this shining being thing that appears in her bedroom so I have to work on this a lot but yeah there's a lot of textures a lot of stuff going on and then there's going to be like a lot of pencils coming off it like this so it's going to be hopefully quite impactful it is now midnight so I think I need to go to bed it's sometimes hard to step away from this when you're kind of in the groove so I'm currently on this page I've got one two three four five six seven pages left and uh yeah I'm going to bed now I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Good morning everybody. It is Saturday and in a weird turn of events, um, it's raining outside. So, perfect time to work on the horror comic. Where I left off, it was Thursday evening and I had finished colouring this page. And now I need to line it. So I thought I would just line this one on camera and answer a few questions that you guys had from the previous video. I always have to check that these are plain papers because I don't want to colour over anything. Yeah, it's fine. This one should be fairly simple to line because I haven't really got that much going on. And I really need to get a folder for these to keep these in. And it's now about 12 midday and I'm going to upload this video later. And in typical style, as I've started doing this, the cats have gotten really hyper and I don't know if you can hear them like running around chasing each other. But these vlogs have always been a little bit more laid back than the other videos I do where I like edit everything and make sure the sound is good. <laughs> Whereas this ones are just, you know, me trying to share my everyday working with you guys. By the way, this is my favourite sharpener ever. I've probably said this a few times, but in case you haven't seen this before, it's the Blackwing. Uh, C-U-M one. I don't like to say C-U-M as a word because it sounds something rude. <laughs> I think it just really like makes the pencils really sharp. Good story, right? I've had real trouble like drawing this character's face for some reason and I don't know why. I probably should go and do a little bit more drawings of her to like get used to drawing her a little bit more. So I got a question from It's Me Art. <laughs> How to make short stories. So uh, this is something that I always struggled with previously. Basically, Emily is Burning, the first sort of short comic that I did, was sort of a push for me to work on short comics because I would always do the same thing as you described where you come up with an idea and then it turns into this really long epic thing that is just pretty intense and hard to do and uh, probably would take, you know, a lot of time that 
you might not have. So for me, it's always been important to think about the ending of the story because I think it's something to aim for. So I know that if I write straight ahead, meaning that I'll just be like, okay, I've got this vague idea of a story and now I'm going to write to that point and then write to the next chapter and see kind of where the characters lead me or where this goes, it can extend to like a really long story and I think it's really important to edit down your work a lot. I'll get into how to do a short story a little bit, or how I do short stories, but first I want to talk about if you are an author or you're pitching a short comic, you want to go to an agent first who will become your lit literary agent and they will send out works to public publications. Um, a lot of places don't take unsolicited work, so to get it solicited, you have to get an agent, a literary agent. So in that case, a lot of places, they won't even look at drafts of stories that are like over 900, uh, 90,000 words kind of thing, because they think they're not going to buy into a massive long story that nobody you know, the potential that nobody would buy it. Whereas if you go to them and say, hey, I've got this short, like, shorter story and the option to expand into more stories in case it does well, that's a much better sell for them. So you've got to think about how you approach that kind of, like, idea. So you've got to think when you're first starting out to write a little bit shorter anyway. Um, I don't know if that's helpful to anyone. It's kind of more about writing than it is about comics. Comics, I would say, you could say I have this comic or I have this comic pitch and I have ideas to expand into more comics if it, you know, becomes successful. But you really want to focus on the fact that this story is a self-contained story and this is what I'm pitching. Otherwise, you're basically asking for a lot rather than just one thing, if that makes sense. So how to write a short story? Like I said, you need to focus on the ending and this is really where that kind of you know middle school story writing comes into play where you have the mini middle beginning and end um you really need an end to write to so that's how i focus on it i'm like okay i want to do a story about this and i need i know that the ending will be this so i need to get to a to b what happens in between a to b has to be interesting so you have to have um, like an idea of what you want to do and if you have like an ending in mind A to B can be as short or as long as you want it to be right so you have to focus on the ending really how to get there it's kind of difficult to explain because for instance if I was writing a long story I would probably just be like okay the ending is out there but I'm not focusing on it so much it's like taking a train ride and thinking like I need to get to London from Ipswich and uh, I know in between that I'm going to hit this station and this station so I need to think what happens at those stations and uh, that will help you stick to that and not make it expand too much into a longer story and I hope that helps some people, it helped me thinking of it that way like I need to just keep to this idea that I need to just get to the ending and uh, that's that's it really that's the advice I can give you because I know it's difficult you have to be really tough on yourself as well um, Stephen King has this advice where he says kill your darlings and basically it's like just edit 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 anything out that you think is just fluff or in the sense of writing um, anything that isn't progressing the story is just not interesting to the audience like i mean it could be but it's it's not pulling the story forward it's not propelling anything so there's no point of it so the more concisely you can tell your story i guess the more bite it has the more interest it has like obviously there are some authors who have beautiful literary style their like writing their language is amazing so they can they can be really flowery in their descriptions and stuff like that so they can have really really long books and it still be kind of interesting i suppose it depends on the type of author you are but it's to me i like people to be kind of a bit concise and i don't like overly descriptive or described stories it depends on what you enjoy i know like for instance jr tolkien and stuff like that would write probably like the description of a flower for half a page and stuff like that so you can do that obviously but it depends it depends 
I think for like horror stories it makes sense for it to be short and snappy and for fantasy it makes sense for it to be kind of flowery and consuming. So I hope that <laughs> helps answer your question. It probably answered more questions than you actually had but um, yeah that's kind of how I go about writing my short stories so I just sit down and make myself do it as well. I think that was the most difficult thing for this comic holding me back was sitting down to just write the thing because even though I had the idea in my head and I knew exactly what it was going to do, to sit down and write each panel is kind of difficult. So it held me back for a long time and then I just was like, just do it and now look at us, I'm, I'm here, I'm drawing this out. Another question from somebody, MW, um, could you do your day in a life as a graphic designer? So I guess that would be like, on the idea basis that would be interesting because it's like, oh a graphic designer, I would like to know what you do day to day, like that would be, I know that would be an interesting concept but I'm working from home right now and all it would literally be is me on the computer not able to show you anything because I can't really show you what I'm working on because it's confidential with my work and then me talking on my headset in meetings every now and again so not really very interesting content for you guys and I understand like you're probably interested in that side of my life of doing graphic design but I can't really show you anything so it's not it wouldn't be great <laughs> Um, that's kind of a vibe that I miss, you know, working from home is you can't really pick up on stuff. You can't look at somebody else's screen and be like, oh, what are you working on there? Like, how do you do that? And it's, it's something that's really useful, like learning from others and sharing information in a team is really handy. And, uh, I think it's really, um, really important. And obviously sometimes you can't do that because maybe you're a freelancer and you're working by yourself and things like that. So maybe it's handy to like look online and learn things. YouTube as well has so many like friggin' resources, you know what I mean? So I think it's really useful to think what you want to do in your life and then try and bolster up anything you can. Yeah, so that's my answer to why I can't really do a day in my life of graphic design. It wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to really show you anything interesting. And the next question is from Danielle and is uh, talking about Emily is Burning, the first comic that I did, if that's coming back into stock. So if you're watching this video, you might have seen earlier when I said, when I was organizing the Kickstarter, and I want to do a reprint of Emily is Burning and possibly put it into this new Kickstarter somehow, like maybe make a bundle of my comics, but I'm not totally sure if I want to do that yet because I don't really want to make it about Emily is Burning because they're not really, apart from being horror comics and the fact that I wrote both and their short stories are not really connected, but I guess that's a connection enough really um, if you wanted to buy them, but I don't know, I I'll have to think about it, um, let me know guys if that's something you think would be a good reward, like the comics bundle, I'm not sure. I should order more of Emily is Burning anyway because it would be nice to, to have them again. That's the answer for that one, uh, I'm not sh sure when they will be printed because I remember last time I got them printed because I live in Gibraltar, I got them printed in the, U in the UK and then shipped out here and for some reason the second time that I printed them they took ages to arrive and I was like come on like people are asking me for it and it took ages for them to get here and I'm not sure why so I'm hoping that that won't happen again especially if I print out stuff for Kickstarter because you know I, I want to give people their rewards if, if it gets funded that is knock on wood as soon as I can so I, I hope that won't be an issue again that's the the answer I guess either way about shipping would be fine because I have to get the other ones printed and shipped anyway so I guess that's not really a, a reason not to print Emily is Burning again. So I wanted to talk about how long this comic took because I saw a couple of comments being like oh you did that quite quickly and um no I don't, I don't think I really did because um I mean once I sat down to do it maybe relatively quickly but um to sit down and then write the story took me a long time like i had these ideas for this comic last year um not sure when about maybe like october time i was like oh that would be like i had the hints the first hints of the idea basically and uh yeah so <laughs> 
um, to sit down and write it took a long time and then I had it written for even longer and then I pushed myself to do the um, <clears throat> the thumbnails which also were a thing that held me back because I think I feel like the writing of it and the thumbnails are like the hard work that leads to the fun part of actually making the comic um, obviously this is hard work but it's like the fun the more fun bit you know like I enjoy this bit the most um, drawing and colouring and stuff and fig whereas that is all kind of like figuring out and assessing and trying to figure out the the flow of your eye of the panels and what's happening in each panel is it leading the story somewhere is it describing something is it doing something for you um so that's kind of like hard work translating word to images and then coming here is like the fun bit because you already did the hard work so it leads to a more enjoyable experience when you come here um yeah so that's that's how long it took me I, I would say this part of it um of drawing the comic I mean for the invisible one the first comic it took me probably about a month to draw out all the pages so not including the time of writing it and thumbnailing it and doing the preliminary work of like character design and all that stuff probably a month of you know every now and then after work or in the evenings drawing out a page I think I've gotten into the rhythm now of like drawing kind of a page at a time each evening or, or roughly you know some nights I take a break because I'm tired or whatever so roughly a 14 comic page would take me you know a couple uh, two weeks and a half so that's the kind of timeline we're looking at once i've done all that work that goes in before it obviously that's different for everyone so don't take that as like a golden standard because some people you know they they take two days to work on one page my my pages are a little bit rough i would say they're probably more simple to do than kind of like a marvel comic standard page stuff like that so it all depends on your your workflow and stuff so that, but that's just like my timeline and uh, another question is from raining sunshine if I have any comics to recommend and oh yes I do there's a lot of comics if you like horror comics Junji Ito has some really great works I've take, definitely taken a lot of inspiration from him story wise not style wise because obviously our styles are like super different but yeah I think he has really creepy stories and uh, they're really well written and uh, well drawn and interesting and just very um, scarring as well. So if you don't like horror, leave that one out. But yeah, <laughs> if you like horror, you will like that. Another one is Joe Hill and what's his name? Don't at me if I'm wrong. I think that's his name um, for Lock and Key. I actually own all the Lock and Key now. Uh, the books and I got them for my birthday last year I already read them before but they're like one of my favorite comic set series they came out on Netflix actually with that series so it's kind of like that but better if you like that series the actual book is better surprisingly I have that opinion <laughs> but yeah uh, it's it's really good it's a little bit creepy it's a little bit whimsical magical fantasy um, realism high school dramas, uh, plays with time, space, uh, lots of different things. I really really like that comic. I think it's really really fun and um, engaging as well, like you really care about the characters. I think it's an awesome set of comics so if you can get your hands on maybe like the first one and see if you like it and then uh, you can test out the rest of them. I think anybody who wants to be an as or a comic artist or aspiring artist should read, should read Blankets by I keep forgetting the names of people. It's something Thompson by Craig Thompson. I think that was one of my favorite comics um, When I first started like Properly getting into comics and thinking actually I want to I want to make comics That was one of the first ones that I read and I was like, whoa, this is awesome uh, This is like it's a true story and um, It's about a guy trying to break out of sort of a overly religious family and it's dark it's very dark and it's a true story and uh i really liked it it was really engaging uh, another comic that i loved when i was um first getting into it was anya's ghost um and i really like that one it's like it's probably a young adult more a young adult kind of comic um 
but it's about like this girl who finds a ghost <laughs> and the ghost starts following her around and it's 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 really good it's i don't want to spoil too much so i'll just say that but yeah it's it, it's 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 great and i really like the visuals in that and the sort of like high school drama dynamic is something that i enjoy reading about so those are kind of some recommendations if you guys want more recommendations let me know because i'm happy to keep recommending stuff um i enjoy reading comics that aren't superhero comics so i would say that i haven't really read that many i love like the watchman and obviously who doesn't um stuff like that but i don't really like superhero-y comics like i don't know even though i haven't really given them a massive chance i would say that i just prefer more real life kind of comics even though lock and key and junji ito aren't really real life um i guess that's kind of my tastes i don't know i've read like the joker the killing curse and stuff like that and batman year one and it just i don't know not really for me but that's just my taste you guys might like those you know that's kind of all i have for recommendations right now i obviously could go on and i keep looking at my bookshelf so that's why my sound probably sounds like I'm moving away but each year um new comics come out so i keep finding new ones to enjoy if you guys have any comic recommendations, let me know down in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for new stuff. I would be interested to see what you guys come up with or tell me is your favourite as well. Oh, that would be really good if you guys could let me know your favourite comic because it would be really interesting to see what our community like most likes, if that makes sense. Because you guys are here um, watching me make a horror comic. I would think that you like comics, um, so let me know. <laughs> So that's kind of like all I have for questions really because um, I didn't really see any other type of questions. If you guys did leave a question and haven't answered it, just let me know. Um, I'll try and answer you down in the comments as best I can. I think it's obviously easier for me to talk to you here because I can blab on. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I hope that those things that I was talking about help someone. I went to to talk about like how I know about um, pitching to an agent and stuff like that is like I did a pitching to an agent course back when I thought I was going to be like a writer and I wanted to make novels and stuff rather than comic and I thought like yeah I'm going to make a massive fantasy uh, book and I'm going to pitch it to these people and they're going to buy it up <laughs> you know dreams that people have sometimes when I was a kid I was like this is this is it this is what I want and uh, no, I think I've changed a little bit into more I want to make comics. So yeah, I did that course. So we've, it was like at Random House as well, which are the people that published um, Harry Potter, I believe at the time. And it was really interesting. Like they were really good because they, they had a load of uh, literary agents there talking about how to get an agent and all this stuff. And it was really good because they were like, um, then you could have like 20 minutes speaking with them and I had to talk about my idea of my book to like an agent and it was re I was so nervous I was just like because I never back then I never really spoke to anybody about that kind of thing so it was really awkward because I was like I don't know how to speak about this story which is not obviously not a good sign if you don't know how to tell somebody your story is like hmm <laughs> maybe you don't have a good story um so it was really awkward but she was really nice and she was like oh share it with me when you're done kind of thing and i was like okay <laughs> i will um like oh, so funny thinking about it but i definitely learned a lot from doing that kind of course it was just like a day course kind of thing so it was really interesting so i'm glad that i did that if i could share some information with you guys um yeah, I hope that it helps someone out there who's going to be an author or something. But yeah, um, super funny thinking back on it. It wasn't that long ago as well. It was like my early 20s and I was just like, this is my new dream. I want to be an author and I'm... <laughs> Yikes. Um, I mean, I could still do it. I Maybe one day. I don't know. So this is like a being that visits... Visits? What am I saying? Visits her in the night and... Um, I'm trying to make it look how I can see it in my head and I hope that it's going to be looking like that. Um, I'll probably finish this up on my own because I think it's going to take too long now but uh, this is kind of the idea 
And I hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of weekly vlog and information about these comics. Please consider, if you're watching this in the past, to uh, checking out my Kickstarter and stuff because I'm going to be doing that soon. In a couple of weeks. Maybe more than that. Probably more than that. Um, but yeah, I really want to do that soon. And then just get this comic off the ground. I'm really excited to work on finalising it all up and... I can't wait. Obviously this one needs a lot of work, but the first one is done and I need to scan them in and Photoshop them all. So I'll probably take you guys along for that process as well and talk about how I do that because I think it might be useful to some of you. Maybe not all of you, but if it helps one person, then that's good, right? Um, yeah, so this is my style. This is what I'm doing. I, um, I'm just going for it and trying my best navigating the world like the rest of you. So I hope that you are kind and, uh, let me know in the comments your favourite comic and what you think of this and, yeah, what you think of my Kickstarter ideas. And that, that's it, basically. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, please like, give this video a like. It really helps me out. And uh, subscribe if you're not. Maybe you enjoyed this content. I don't know. Okay, thank you guys. Bye!